Hey guys, I've gotten so many questions since I started sharing about my terzepatide journey. If you don't know, terzepatide is the active ingredient in Monjero and Zetbounds. Those are GLP medications, just like Ozempic and Wagovi. I am in my fourth month using compound terzepatide. I use a telehealth program that provides me with compound terzepatide, which is a generic version made out of licensed compounding pharmacy, and it's shipped to my door. A quick recap, I decided to get on terzepatide after a solid year of trying to get to a healthier weight with diet and exercise and having just no luck, being kind of stuck. I did a lot of research into GLP-1s and specifically terzepatide. Terzepatide is great for helping you get to a healthier weight. My BMI that I was stuck at was about 27, and I do have heart disease as well, which makes being overweight extra not great. So it was really important to me to get to a healthier weight um, and also make lifestyle changes in the process. Since getting on terzepatide, I have lost 25 pounds. I have about five more to go and I do plan on getting off of it. I have totally changed my diet with the help of this medicine. Um, I'm on definitely an insulin resistant diet, so I avoid sugars and carbs and I try to stack up on proteins and fibers. I've also added weightlifting to my regimen, and I didn't fully understand how important weightlifting and strength training was, and so I've added that to my regimen. I've also gotten an IUD. I was on the pill before, which was giving me a lot of PCOS symptoms. I think hormonal weight gain and weight retention was definitely part of my problem, so working with my doctor to kind of get that area fixed as well. So I do plan on getting off of it with these changes in my life, and I'm hoping it goes well. Stay tuned. I've asked for questions and I got a lot. I have combined a couple questions that were really similar so that I'm not repeating myself. All right, let's jump on in. What can I do about the fatigue from this medication? So I totally agree fatigue is a problem. When you think about it, a lot of us are eating that maybe half the calories we were before. And so calories are energy and so we feel less energy. So one diet is huge having a high protein diet still, even though we're eating less, we need to be eating about the same amount of protein. So that means a lot of our diet is gonna be protein. Also, when you're on this medicine, I think supplements are a good thing. So protein supplements, fiber supplements, take a multivitamin, an electrolyte drink. You're not getting as many electrolytes in, and so an electrolyte drink can make you feel a lot better. It's also a diabetic medicine, so your blood sugar might just be really low. And so an electrolyte drink can help you that. If you notice that like every time you stand up, you're super lightheaded or something, an electrolyte drink might really help. I absolutely love it on days that I can get an afternoon nap. It makes me feel so much better. The evening, everything is just so much better. I know not everybody can do that because your work or whatever, but if there is any way at all to get an afternoon nap in, it really helps. Also, just be prioritizing your sleep. You need to get enough sleep at night. So even if that means turning off Netflix or not scrolling or whatever it is, prioritize your sleep so that you feel better the next day. I do notice that on days two and three after my shot are the days that I'm the most fatigued. And so planning your shot accordingly can help that. Try to plan out your shot day so that on days two or three of your shot, you can maybe rest a little more. Maybe those days you can take a nap. I started Zetbounds, but now I can't get it everywhere. What should I do? I'm so frustrated. That is super frustrating. I can only imagine being like on this journey and getting used to the side effects, um, seeing the scale finally move, and then all of a sudden you can't get your meds. That's so frustrating. I know um, a lot of people just start calling and they'll Google pharmacies within like a two hour radius and just start calling. So I get it. If your insurance is covering Zetbound or Monjero, you really need to stay with the name brands for financial reasons. I totally understand that. So I, I don't know that much you can do besides just start calling pharmacies within your radius to see if anybody has them. Maybe work with your doctor if they have you know, the five and you're on 7.5. Talk to your doctor. Say, hey, can I go on five this month? so that you know i don't have to skip a month now if your insurance isn't covering it i would definitely consider switching to compound work with a good telehealth that is getting the compound from a licensed domestic uh, u.s facility and i really like the compounds a lot of times you get more in your vial per month than you need which can save you money then you'll have extra i found using an insulin needle to pull the vial is 
just totally easy. I know some people are worried about that. You know, the, the, the special pins that the name brand have um, are easy to use, but I've done absolutely fine with the compounds and you probably would do. Are the compound shots hard to do? No, not at all. I have no clinical backgrounds or anything. My provider gave me some instructions, but basically you just use an insulin needle to draw the medicine out of the vial. And then um, I kind of just pop it into my skin and I hardly feel it. I always do my shots in my legs because I can hardly feel them when I put them in my legs versus like my stomach hurts a little more. I've never tried my arm, but I hardly feel it. You know, you just give yourself the shot and it's, it's really fine. Dosing correctly is important though, um, depending on where your compounds medication is coming from. Mine's really easy. Mine comes from Red Rock Pharmacy. So if I'm on the 2.5 of trisepatide, I'm taking 25 units, which actually, why don't I just go get a needle? I'll show you. This is the needle. I just got a big pack of these on Amazon so that I'd have plenty. The vial does come with a couple of these, but the vial that I get monthly um, actually lasts me two months. And so I wanted to have extras of these. I would just pull this off, pull this off, and I'm on the 2.5, so that's 25 units. So, so I just pull it up to where it says 25, and then that's the right amount. And then I can just pop this in my skin and squeeze it down, pull it out, very easy. I always put the cap back on and the lid but some compounding pharmacies are a little more complicated than that it'll give you instructions and everything but for like 2.5 you might be pulling like 35 units or something like the the numbers might not coincide as well <laughs> but there will be information for that but keep that in mind what to do when there's only a little left in the bottom of your compound vial so if there's literally only a tiny bit left and you don't want to waste the liquid gold, you can use a bottle opener and like pop off the top and then draw it out. If you don't want to do that, some people also, um, they'll take this off and fill this with air before they put it in the vial and squeeze some air into the vial and then draw it out. And then it creates like a sort of vacuum and you're more likely to be able to get that last little bit out. What should I eat while on the meds? Um, I talked on this a little bit, obviously high protein, you're gonna be eating less, but you need to be eating the same amount or more protein than you were eating before. I'd go ahead and stock up on supplements, protein powder, protein bars. Um, I just got this green juice that I really like. Bloom, you can get this at Sam's. It's on the TikTok shop too, if you've seen it on the TikTok shop, but. This is really good. It has like a ton of different superfoods and stuff. If you are just not hungry in order to get something down, I would definitely do like a green juice or a protein smoothie or something. You need to make sure you're eating and try to give your body what it needs. When should I take my shot? I take mine in the evening and I think a lot of people take theirs in the evening or night. And the theory is then if like the side effects just hit you, hopefully you're sleeping through them. My side effects kind of peak on days two or three after the medicine. I normally don't, don't like wake up with like all these side effects. I do normally wake up pretty full the next day, even if I didn't eat that much like the day before or anything. So I do it in the evening just, just in case I don't get like a wave of side effects in the middle of my day if I do it in the morning, but I don't know that it makes that much of a difference. What can be done about loose skin? Loose skin is one of those things I think that are just, is just kind of inevitable. Like if you're having a very dramatic weight loss, you're probably going to see some loose skin. I have some loose skin from my pregnancies, definitely a little bit from my weight loss. I, you can Toning helps, so having a strength training routine helps. Moisturized skin helps, but there's not a lot you can do if it's extreme. Um, loose skin surgery is really the only thing I know of. I personally don't have a ton of loose skin, but if it is bothering me, if I'm trying to wear something a little tighter or whatever, then I really like shapewear. <laughs> it just kind of sucks everything in and makes things look kind of smooth under clothes, you know? Do you plan to stop the meds? Yes, I think I'm only gonna do one more month. I'd like for my last two weeks on the medicine to be doing like half doses. That's another benefit of the compounds. Um, since I'm on the lowest dose of the name brands, I couldn't do that if I was on the name brand. But since I'm on the compounds, instead of taking 
2.5, I might take like 1.5 and then one. So I would just want to like, even though I'm on the, a really low dose, I still want to wean off of it. And I plan to get off of it. I mean, for financial reasons, my insurance doesn't cover it. Um, my health is much better. I feel like I have directly treated a lot of the reasons that I wasn't losing weight and I was overweight. Um, I also want to see how I do. I mean, I know that the food noise will come back and the cravings will come back and I know it will all be harder. I totally get that. Um, but at the same time, I do want to try. I do have some side effects. Um, I sometimes get nauseous, get you know a little extra fatigue. In general, I think if you don't need to be on a medicine, then it's kind of great to see if you you do okay without it. And so that's why I plan to get off of it. I totally understand that people with diabetes, chronic obesity, food addiction, um, there's a lot of conditions that mean you need to be on this medicine lifelong. I totally get that. For me, I was having um, a lot of, you know, hormonal issues, PCOS symptoms. I had had two babies in two years. It was also really important to me to get to a healthier weight because of my heart condition. Um, all of those things um, were why I decided to get on a trisepatide plan. Um, and then once, now that I'm doing so much better, I do want to get off of it. And then I saved this for last. Um, what is your maintenance plan? So my maintenance plan is to continue uh, my dietary changes. I'm following, you know, a PCOS, insulin resistant diet, high protein, high fiber, high veggies, low carb, not no carb, but low carb, trying to really avoid sugar, continuing with strength training in addition to cardio, and then lightly tracking my meals and my intake. I don't think that every single day I need to put everything I eat for the rest of my life into, you know, my fitness pal or anything, but I do think I need to be consciously aware. Um, I think maybe I need to designate times for eating. So like breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, you know, like try not to snack in between those. And when I do have dinner, I only have one plate, just don't go for seconds. And I just think it's, um, I'm always going to have to be aware of my intake because I am someone um, that doesn't naturally stop right away, if that makes sense. Like if I have one plate of dinner, I could probably eat three, but I can also probably be fine stopping at one. So I should probably stop at one, if you know what I mean. Okay, those were the questions you guys asked. If you have any more questions, I'd be happy to chat about anything in the comment section. Feel free to leave me your journey, what it's been like uh, for you in the comment section. I love to connect with people, see where they're at, see what they're doing. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love if you subscribed if you have not already, and I will see you in my next video.